I am a mocha mom and I am back to answer a question from Latora. She left a picture. She messaged me a picture and asked me what I thought her daughter's hair type was because her daughter's hair, she describes it as being dry no matter what she does, no matter what method she uses, no matter what products that she uses. And my initial response to her was, I need more information because I've used hair typing and the pictures of other people's hair to try to give me an idea of whether or not their stuff would work for me. But what I've learned the hard way is that a person's hair can look exactly like yours in a picture. I mean, there are a lot of factors, lighting, what kind of camera was used, your perception of what your hair look like looks like as opposed to what it really does look like. And, you know, in other words, your hair can look exactly like someone else's hair in a picture, but behave completely differently in real life. So I wanted to know what products she uses, how often she washes her daughter's hair, what her daughter's diet is like, how, well, how much water she drinks, and not just that, but how she applies the products. Are you applying oils to clean wet hair? So that I could really understand what, where the problem is coming from. So here is what her response was. Last month, I started a regimen on her hair where I wash her hair twice a week, one day with no sulfate shampoo and co-wash two or three days later. So she's washing her hair twice a week, once with shampoo and a couple of days later with conditioner. I made the same shea butter mix that you use with your daughters for when I style her hair and a mixture of avocado, almond, jojoba, olive, castor oils to seal water in her hair. I spritz her hair every morning and night and add oil on top of that. Twice a week, I bag her hair overnight because her hair dries out extremely quickly, meaning she puts, a pla she puts plastic over her moisturized daughter's hair as she sleeps overnight. That's a, um, I don't know if it's her, the whole head. I should have asked her that. Some people have done it just to the ends of the hair to kind of trap the oil and moisture in overnight. She eats all the main food courses and she only drinks water maybe four cups a day and juice only on occasion, birthdays out at restaurants. I feel like I'm researching and learning as much as possible, but her hair is not cooperating. I don't want to over moisturize it, but I want to make sure she's getting enough moisture as well. I so understand where you are. I kind of went through something similar with MG2 when I started getting on hair boards and getting all this information about taking care of natural hair. Blogs as well. There's so much information and my anxiety about MG2's hair, which I perceive to be duller and drier than and more brittle than her sister's hair at the time you know my anxiety about that was so great that I wanted to apply everything I learned all at once and my biggest enemy became build up so what I would say to you Latora is you're doing too much at the same time because if you're applying all these different oils and they all sound really good but if you're applying them all at the same time how will you know if there's one that she doesn't respond well to just because something is natural and good and works well for other people doesn't mean that it might not be the one oil that your daughter's hair hates I know personally for me and with my hair, my hair hates coconut oil by itself. Even to make it more confusing, when my hair was relaxed, my hair loved coconut oil. Once I went natural, my hair hates coconut oil by itself. Now coconut oil is an excellent oil with a lot of good attributes to it. My hair will tolerate coconut oil if it's in something else like shea butter if I'm doing a long-term protective style. But if I'm just wearing my hair out in a puff, which I don't do anymore because my hair is, is, I have dreadlocks now. But if I was wearing my hair out in a puff, you know, shea butter would not be the, the, the butter that I would choose to use on my hair. So for different styles, I would use different products. So shea butter is very heavy. It's thick. It, it coats the hair in a way that can take away some of the sheen. So when my hair is in cornrows or braids or twists, and I know I'm not going to be 
reapplying oil over and over and over again. Shea butter is fantastic. But when my hair is loose, you know, it, it actually makes my hair look, look dull. And it builds up very quickly. Shea butter, in, in, in particular, my shea butter mix, which already has coconut oil, it already has olive oil in it. I would not use that and a mixture that has avocado, almond, jojoba, olive, cap, you know, too much. And oil is something that your hair doesn't exactly absorb. I think there's only a couple of oils that actually absorb into the hair shaft. I think, I think coconut oil is one that does that. And perhaps jojoba oil. But olive oil, all these other oils, they just sit on top of your hair. Their job is to make sure that the water doesn't evaporate. That a tiny bit of water doesn't evaporate before it makes the strand supple. So if you style your daughter's hair and put plenty to style, which we tend to do, that night, you're just caking more stuff on top. Your, your daughter's hair is getting greasy, but nothing is happening different to the strand to give it moisture. And, it, and so you, you're caking oil, the oil is drawing dust, making her hair more dirty. So it would be better for you to decide, I'm going to try the shea butter and see if that works. But in her case, since you really don't know what her hair will respond well to, I would even recommend trying one oil. Try them one at a time and see what her hair thinks. You really don't need a magic mixture with 50,000 ingredients. You just need something that will make the water not evaporate off of her hair shaft and something that's easy for you to wash off once the job is done. Another thing I noticed you said is you wash her hair once with the shampoo and then after that you wait a couple of days and you co-wash. Now I thought co-washing would be the thing that saved MG2's dry hair but in all honesty her hair hates conditioner. Her hair hates creamy conditioners. The only thing I really use a conditioner for for her hair is to, to give it that slip that it needs for me to take an old style out and to detangle it. And that would qualify as a quote unquote um, detangling session. So her hair hates it. So, But it was a hard change for me to just say, okay, maybe the conditioner route that everyone on the internet is going crazy about is not going to work for my daughter, especially for MG2, especially since it was working so well for her sisters. So well, depending on how your hair responds, some of these really great methods may not work for each and every person. And you have to honor the individuality of each head of hair. So for her, what I've noticed works best is, you know, her hair does well with apple cider vinegar rinses, but less is more. I don't think you really need to be washing her hair that many times a week. I tend to use shampoo on my daughter's hair once every two weeks. If we are swimming, it's more because I have to get rid of the chlorine that's in their hair. But Co if you're going to co-wash, co-wash. If you're going to do shampoo, do shampoo. But it doesn't need to all happen all in the same week. You need to experiment to see does her hair respond well to co-washing or does her hair respond well to shampooing. Maybe I'm going to co-wash for the first, you know, two times I style her hair. And then on the last time I'll use shampoo. Because depending on what you're using to co-wash, if you're using a conditioner that's heavy in silicones, those, those th th tend to build up on the hair. And, and over time, at first you may be fine, but over time, you know, you'll need to wash that off because it'll coat the hair and then the water won't penetrate to do what it needs to do. And over time, your hair will get dry and dry no matter how much conditioner you're using. And the dullness and the dryness comes from the buildup. So what I would recommend for you is to first of all start with a clean slate. Wash her hair with, uh, with, a sh with a shampoo or a clarifying shampoo to get everything 
off her hair. Now, I'm not saying wash it five and six and seven times. You probably don't have to go that far. But wash what's on her hair now off of her hair. Choose one oil. You know, I like to say start with olive oil. When you want, when you style her hair, style her hair damp and put maybe a dime size amount, rub your hands together and work it through her hair in sections. You'd be surprised at how much, much oil is still left on your hands. You don't have to keep pouring more and more and more. With that dime size amount that you have all over her hair, work it through all of her hair. Make sure you work in sections so that you're not just putting all the oil on the top layer and not getting any throughout. Make sure her hair is damp. Not soaking wet, but damp when you do that. Be patient. Now that you have a clean slate, you've applied one oil, take some time and see what her hair does. Even dry hair wants to be left alone. Nappy hair wants to be left alone. I recommend you find a protective style you could leave in for at least a week. If her scalp is healthy and she doesn't have flaking issues, you could probably go for two weeks. That's probably optimal. Whatever you could do to leave her hair alone as much as possible just to give the hair a chance to recover from all the different things you've been trying and all the different things you've been putting on. Give the hair a chance to breathe and relax so that you could really see what the hair is in and of itself without it responding to all these different things you're doing to it. But in the beginning, you need to identify what works for her hair and what doesn't. And it really doesn't take a lot. There's a temptation to find a shampoo that's going to be perfect and a conditioner that's going to make it optimal and the, the, it's going to make the curls pop the most and it's going to make the hair grow the most and that's how all these products are marketed but you really just need a shampoo to get her hair clean that won't strip her hair a conditioner to return the state of her hair to what it was before it got roughed up by the shampoo and an oil to trap small amounts of moisture in her hair so that her strands are elastic and they don't just snap off when you manipulate it Moisture comes from water, small amounts of water trapped on the hair strand. Moisture also comes from her diet, making sure she's drinking enough water, she's getting en enough omega-3 fatty acids, she's getting enough sleep, enough rest, enough exercise. A healthy body all the way around produces healthy hair. Congratulations on making sure she has a well-balanced diet. I think you're doing a good job. If she's drinking four cups of water, that's fantastic. And really just relax and be patient and when you learn new things take it with a grain of salt and make sure you're not trying everything at once so that you can really identify what's really working for you 